Hello, I'm Avuga Tacos, and uh, today I thought we would go through a kind of a crash course of the Maker Pen. So why don't we get started? Uh, the goal here is to try and uh, expose you to as many different things within the Maker Pen uh, as I can within a reasonable amount of time. Um, and I think the best way to do that is to uh, actually build something uh, to kind of demonstrate a bunch of those kinds of things. So uh, why don't I get out the Maker Pen real quick and let's kind of just dive right in. So I got my micro pen here. Uh, here's my mocha look, look a little bit different from mine. Um, I just, uh, I happen to train dragons on the side. Anyway, um, so open the palette. And um, so in our palette, we got a whole bunch of things here. Um, but in the props, there is a very fun thing under dynamic. We have the rec room button. So I want to just put this out here for a second. Let's take a look at this thing. So I thought it would be kind of cool if we recreated the rec room button uh, using um, the Maker Pen uh, circuitry. Um, and the reason why I want to do that is because I think it's a pretty simple uh, build, but it's also functional. So, you know, you can use it in your builds uh, elsewhere. Um, so yeah, so why don't we go and put this off to the side for a second and uh, get my maker pen back out. And uh, why don't we start building this? And then, you know, uh, as we're building this, I'll start to call out some of the things that um, um, as, I, as I get to them. So I think the first thing we should do is we should probably make the frame here. So uh, why don't we do that real quick? So I'm going to look at my maker pen and I'm going to go to create. Uh, and I'm also going to open up the palette. So the palette is like, if you think of like a traditional artist who has like a palette with like colors in one hand and then their brush in the other, like that's the dynamic that you have here. So let's go to the palette. Let's go to our shapes and colors area. Um, and I'm going to pick a cube. Um, and I think I probably want, ooh, look at all the colors. So I think I'm going to probably get, nah. Let's change the, uh, let's change the size of this real quick. Okay, so a little bit bigger size, it looks a little better. Um, I also have snap on. If you if you look at your maker pen here, you've got an option that says snap. If you don't do that, then it's kind of like, it's free form. Um, but if we hit snap here, then it's aligned to like a virtual grid in the world, uh, which helps to be a lot more uh, accurate with your uh, with your builds. So I'm gonna change the position snap, so it's like how, how much it snaps to, like how much it moves when you move your maker pen. Change it to about five, and I usually like about five, 15 degrees of uh, rotation there. You can see what that looks like. Um, let's go back to shapes and colors. Um, this gray color, I'm not feeling it. Let's go for a little bit brighter white. Yeah, that looks good. I think that'll show up bro. All right. Um, okay, cool. So what we want to do is we want to build the frame of this button, and then we want to build the uh, green pad. So um, why don't we get that started first? So I'll start building out the first part of the frame here. Drag it out like that. Um, now, okay, so here's my first thing that I want to kind of bring up is whenever you make a shape in Rec Room, you don't just make a shape. You actually end up making like a group. Um, so there's this shape here, but there's it's also like a container. So you can keep adding more shapes. And if you hit done, uh, after you've uh, finished, you know, adding a bunch of shapes, you hit done here and use the move tool. You can actually move the entire thing as one object. Um, so this is really powerful because the Rec Room kind of calculates the usage of ink, which is represented on your, the side of your maker pen here. Um, they usually calculate based on like how many uh, shape groups, like unique shapes there are, uh, as well as a couple of the factors like um, physics and stuff like that. But in, for the most part, um, it's usually calculated by like how many of these like unique shapes you have. So a lot of advanced builders in Rec Room will usually try to pack in a bunch of shapes into one shape group. Um, this helps them save on ink and this allows them to get a lot more detail um, without using up so much ink and going kind of overboard with it. Um, anyway, uh, why don't we go back here, let's keep working on this, kind of got a little crazy here for a second. So I'm going to hit the edit tool, I'm going to edit this, and uh, I'm just going to delete all these other things here because I don't really need them here. Right, okay, so back to building the frame of the button. So we got the button here, frame. Now I could probably 
hit create and I could probably start, you know, dragging out and building another one, but it's kind of hard for me to see like, is this, is that the right length? Is that the right length? You know, I want this to be symmetrical. So uh, I'm just going to do that. I think the easier way here is actually to use the clone tool here. So if we clone this, we can just pull a copy. We can line it up. So take another copy, line it up like that. And one more copy. Oop. OK, looks good. So that's going to be the frame of our button. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to make the pad here. So I'm going to switch back to create and I'm going to find a nice green color. Sure, why not? Okay, yeah, good enough, sure. Um, so I think I'm done with this for now. So uh, I'm going to hit done editing. And again, all those objects are all part of one object group. So I can move the entire thing around. So it was a one on object. Super useful. Okay. Uh, we, we need to be able to like detect when someone actually like wants to put their hand on this button. And then once we get that, then we can decide how this button is supposed to interact. Like if I put my hand down on it, then this pad here should probably go down. If I take my hand off of it, it should probably come up. So um, why don't we do that first? Let's get the actual like input of this button. Um, so the way to do that is we start to get into gadgets. So in our gadgets tab here, um, we got a whole plethora of stuff. Um, these are all circuits. These are all things that allow us to do computations. Uh, but if you go down here to the side, you've got um, ba -ba -ba, other gadgets. And these are some like very unique specialty things like the radios in here. We've got an emitter and we've got an object spawner, all these crazy things, lights are in here. Um, but one that we really want is the trigger volume. So let's hit the trigger volume for a second. Um, so you're not gonna be able to see this on the recording, um, but uh, there's actually like, there's like a cube here. There's like a translucent cube right in front of my maker pen. Um, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw out a shape similar to the size of this cube. And this is what we're going to be using for detecting player uh, interaction. Um, a trigger volume basically just detects when you when something enters into it and then sends out a value to it. Um, so I'm just going to draw real quick. OK, that's a little bigger than I thought it was going to be. But anyway, um, OK, so we've got this trigger zone here. Let me see if I can like get this into like a better light and so you can see it better. I guess it's I guess it's okay here. It's gonna be a little hard to see but it's like a translucent kind of like purple box here. Um, so what this does is um, currently it's purple and there's actually two different colors the purple and the green one. This purple one here um, if we go to the configure button and let me click on this We'll notice the uh, palette updates here with some options specifically for this trigger zone. And so this trigger zone can keep track of either players or objects. Currently set to players, so it's purple. If we set it to objects, it turns green. Um, what we want to do is we want to detect players though. So what this means is whenever a player puts their hand or body part, something into the zone, it'll detect it and it will send an output through these uh, arrow pins here. Uh, you know, each one of these does something a little bit different depending on the condition that's met when you uh, pass through that trigger zone. Um, we can find that out really quickly by going to the wire tool here. And if we go to the wire tool and we kind of hold over uh, with our maker pen, you can see like the blue one here is when exiting the zone. So that means it'll send a value out briefly when someone who's in the zone comes out of the zone. Um, same thing for the screen one here, total currently in the zone. So I'm gonna see if I can position this properly here. So as you'll see, I can put my hand into the zone and it outputs a one and it stays that way until I remove my hand and then outputs a zero. And then lastly, when entering the zone, so it'll briefly output a one when I stick my hand in. Just like that. So. This is a very nice tool here. This allows us to do a couple different things. Um, and this allows us to drive a lot of gizmos and circuitry within Rec Room by using these way, these um, trigger zones for detecting player uh, interaction. So we're gonna use this 
to detect when someone wants to press this button. So I'm just gonna like, kind of like, I think I'm gonna shrink this down actually. I'm gonna go to my scale tool and I'm gonna turn off snapping so that I can get more refined control over my scale. I'm gonna kind of just shrink this down a tiny bit and then I'll switch back to snap, back to the move tool. And I'm just gonna try and like line this up. It doesn't need to be perfect, but well, I mean, sometimes it needs to be perfect. Why don't I, um, why don't we back out of this real quick? Let's go to settings. Let's change this position snap to one centimeter. So then it doesn't snap so much and then we can kind of like get it a little more approximate. Yeah, okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna switch this back to five and back in gadgets here. Okay, so um, why don't we test this out here? So let's get into some of the uh, circuitry here. So the one of the most important ones I think is uh, a way to actually see interactions happening in real time. And we can do this with an output chip. So this output chip, if we see this right here, basically what happens is you pipe something into this and it'll display a value for you. And so this is really good for like debugging your circuits and trying to figure out like what's firing, what's not firing, things like that. Um, so why don't we connect this trigger zone to this and we can actually see real-time results happening. So this first pin here, so when entering the zone, let's take that with the wire tool and let's wire it up to the input of the um, uh, of the uh, output chip. Um, and so now, if I move this back a little bit, if I stick my hand into this trigger zone, we should see a one briefly. Eh, just like that. And if we uh, disconnect it and reconnect the green pin to this, the green pin is total currently in the zone. So saying zero because there's nothing in the zone. Stick my hand to it. It stays as a one. If I pull my hand out, it goes to a zero. And lastly, when, end, when exiting a zone, if we wire that up here, nothing happens because I haven't actually left the zone. I've entered it, but I haven't actually left it. So once I leave it, then we get a value that outputs. So leaving gets another value. Um, and so we can use these to go and drive and trigger events for this button. Like when my hand goes in here, button should go down. When my hand leaves, the button should come up. Things like that. Um, I think for now, why don't we just disconnect this for a sec. Oop. And move tool. Kind of move this out of the way a little bit. Um, so why don't we start talking about movement. I think that's another good thing to start getting familiar with here. So um, to move anything in Rec Room, you need to use a gizmo. At the moment, uh, at the time of this recording, there are four different kinds of gizmos that you can use. Each one does something different. Clamp, look at, piston, and rotator. Um, now, if we look at our button here for a second, we want this nice vertical motion that this button does. And interestingly enough, we have a gizmo specifically for moving linearly up and down, left and right, whichever orientation you put it in. So why don't we hit this piston here and let's play around with it for just a quick second. Okay, so we've got a piston here. If we go to the uh, configure uh, tool and then click on it, we've got a couple options here. I'm gonna bring this over here so we can just kind of look at it together. Um, so we got a couple different things here. We have move to target, acceleration time, max travel distance, is it grabbable? That's a new thing. Um, and hide during the game. Let's not worry about some of those features right now. I think the biggest thing right now to um, be aware of are these two options here. So we have move to target, we have the max travel distance. So maximum travel distance, that's how much, the, how much uh, distance that this can actually travel along this uh, green beam here. Um, and then the other one here is move to target. So why don't we just turn this on for a second and then I'll talk about all the inputs of this gizmo. So let's close the palette for a sec. So let's talk about this gizmo for a second here. So um, all gizmos have uh, at least one uh, input pin. Some have up, or up to three like this one does. Um, and each one of these drives a very specific property of the gizmo. So in this case, this is a piston. Um, the piston needs to be turned on. 
Um, so this is the power input pin, so you need to supply power to it in the form of a positive number. Um, this is the speed, so this is how fast it moves along its, uh, its guided line here, this green beam. Uh, and then this last one here, which we just enabled, and it just kind of popped out when we enabled it in the settings. This is move to target. Um, and what this means is that we can actually specify a specific location along this beam for it to go to. So the three together, we could turn it on and make it go to a specific point at a specific speed. So that's how we're going to use this piston here. And we're going to use this piston to drive this pad of our button here. Um, why don't we play with this real quick? So let's go ahead and create, and let's add another chip uh, from the uh, the gadgets here. So let's go to the math chips here. Um, another really, really important chip to learn is the variable chip. Let's just pull this out here for a sec. Um, I'm actually going to take this gizmo, this gizmo and put this right next to... Okay, cool. So, you can already see some uh, similarities going on here. So we've got a red pin, red pin, green pin, green pin, blue pin, blue pin. So, a variable chip is basically, it's a container. It's a container that holds values. And these values can be uh, input into other places where they can receive them, like this gizmo. So, um, these are just three empty values here. So, why don't we take the wire tool and let's just hook all these up real quick. Now, nothing's happening with this gizmo at all because all these values are empty, so, you know, it's off, there's no speed, and there's no, uh, there's no um, location that we want it to go travel to. But if we go to configure and we configure the uh, variable chip, we can kind of take a look at this here. So it's got the red, green, and blue signals, red, green, and blue. Um, so the way we have it right now, we have the red going into the on pin. We have the green going into the speed pin, and we have the blue going into the um, uh, move to target pin. Um, so this is kind of interesting. So we can actually watch and we can manipulate this gizmo in real time. So first, let's turn it on. Okay, great. It's now on. That's not doing anything because we don't have any uh, speed. We don't have any direction for it to go in. Um, why don't we give it a speed? So I'm going to put in something like 25. Sure. Um, and then here's the interesting part is the blue pin is connected to the move to target. So we need to put in a target here. So I think there's like a specific distance here of maybe like uh, 25 centimeters. Sure, why not? We'll input this real quick. So 25. Now watch what happens when I hit OK. You should see this piston start to move. There you go. Apparently that's 25 centimeters that it moved up. Um, but what if we want to bring this down? Um, you know, so there's a couple ways we could do this actually. Because we're using the move to target, we could actually just say, oh, just move to zero. Just put in zero. Goes to zero. And it goes to zero at the speed that we had set in the green pin, which is 25. 25 centimeters a second or something like that. Um, so that's kind of how the piston operates here. So we, we feed it values, um, and as long as it's on, uh, it will keep doing uh, what it needs to do. Um, we obviously can't do this manually all the time. So that's where this kind of comes into a more advanced version of this variable chip here. So I'm just going to delete this for a sec. And let's go to create. Let's go into gadgets here. And in other chips, hidden on the second page, is a very, very powerful chip. This is the state machine. Let's pull out the state machine for a second. So it's a lot more colorful. It's got a bit more uh, pins on it. Um, so let's talk about this for a second. So previously we just saw we have a variable chip. The variable chip is a container. It contains three values that we can specify. A state machine is kind of like a, a variable chip, except its values can be changed depending on what state it needs to be in at that time. And so this is very powerful. So now you can start seeing, like, if we have a state for when the button is not pressed, 
send those three values of the variable chip into this thing. If someone enters this, oh, that's a different state. So send three different values to cause the, the button to do something different. Um, this will make more sense once we uh, start building it together. But um, this is really considered like the machine of the state machine. So this machine is basically just reading values from different states and then outputting them in those three pins there. Um, if you hit the select tool here, and let's uh, select the state machine, go to the three dot menu, which you probably can't see in the recording here, but there's like three dot menu that like popped up here. It's like three little dots. Um, and we hit that, and there's a little menu that pops up that says add state. So we hit that real quick, and it creates a state. Okay, let's take a look at this for a second. Let's move the uh, piston out of the way here. So if you can see here, machine, state, and they're connected to each other. So this state is kind of like the variable chip, but it feeds those three values into this machine, and the machine outputs them. Now, this is just one state, so we need to add uh, a second state because there's two different states for this button. It's up or it's down. We can make a new one by hitting the select tool, and we can it's just like we did with the state machine, we're doing the same thing here. We're selecting the state, we're going to the three dot menu, and we're hitting add state. And that adds a second state. And you'll notice it was attached to the first state. And then we got a new little thing here. So we got this like green arc that shows that it's connected. We have the same kind of arc that shows that these two are connected. But then there's also this little triangle icon here, this little arrow icon. This is like a trigger. So to go between states, a trigger needs to be activated to say, okay, you're done with this state, you need to go into this state. <laughs> and that is how the state machine works. So you've got these two things are being fed into this machine and this machine outputs the values. So this could have three values, this could have three different values. If it's in this state, its three values get output here. If it's in this state, those three values get output here. So you can cycle between them two. We're gonna use the state machine to uh, control how this button needs to move up and down. Okay, now, we've got our two states here. Um, and so, the, when we talk about this button and building this button here, it has two different states. Like this first state, nothing is happening. So this is just the up state. When we actually press it down though, we want the button to actually go down. We actually have to press it down. Um, and that'll be the second state. So we could rename these states to make this a little bit clearer. So state one, if we go to uh, configure here, um, you can notice there's three values, value one, two, and three. Think of this as red, green, and blue. Just like we have here, red, green, and blue. Um, but there's also a state name on the next page here. So why don't we modify this real quick and let's just say this is the up state. So it gets updated here, we've got up, and let's change this one now. Let's call this one down. So now we've got up and we've got down. Right. Okay. So if these are two different kinds of variable chips and they're feeding their values into this machine, we need some way to take those values and then dump them into this so that we can control this. Um, so we do all this from the machine, not the actual states themselves. We do them from the machine here. So just like we did with the uh, variable chip uh, previously, let's just connect the values here. So red to red, green to green, and blue to blue. There's other two values here. So we have a time in state and we also have a time or, or a, a, a signal for when a state has changed. These are really useful for more, more advanced circuitry where you want to maybe trigger something or some event happens when let's say this if, uh, this state changes to that one. But uh, we might cover that in like a, maybe a later tutorial. But for now, we're just kind of treating this as like a dynamic variable chip that can change its values on the fly. Okay, so 
we've got our three values here, and they are plugged into the three values of this piston. So why don't we start uh, playing around with this? Um, so let's look at our up state. Now our up state probably doesn't need to have a lot of values in it. Um, if you remember, we're using this move to target, and we also have the speed, and we also need to make sure that the uh, gizmo is on. Now, in our case for up, um, you know, we it doesn't really need to move anywhere. It just needs to stay still. Um, the only thing it needs to really do is just be on. So we could just turn it on and leave it that way. Um, however, for down, that's that's going to be a little bit more interesting. Why don't we uh, edit down real quick? So down, same thing. Like we want to turn on the gizmo, um, but we also want to move it a certain distance at a certain amount of speed, and that can be handled here. So we got think of this as like the red, green, and blue values. So green here is like the speed. Um, when we put in the value we had previously, so that's 25, um, and then the distance we also had 25. We just had just arbitrarily put those in there. Okay, interesting. So you'll see it had moved up. And the reason it done that is because if you look at this different state uh, uh, mechanics here, this machine is following the flow. And you can see that this like little weird symbol here is lit up. This one's turned off and this one is lit up. So this one is lit up, meaning that this one is the current state. And so it's feeding those values into the uh, state machine and sending them out to this gizmo here. Um, that's great, but how do we get it back to up? Um, so if you remember, we have this connector here, and this is the trigger. Now, obviously, there's nothing that's telling it to, you know, to trigger otherwise, so it's just open, so it just goes from up right into down, and then down stays there because it doesn't have a way to jump back. So we need to complete that loop. So if we go to our wire tool, and we wire this back, you'll see that we now have this like infinite loop going. Again, both of these are triggers and these triggers are kind of like gates and these gates are open. So they are passing the value over to this one and then it's passing it back to this one and just they're endlessly doing that. Meanwhile, the values that are in here and the values that are in here are constantly being sent to this machine, which are then being fed into our, uh, our gizmo here. So this is why it's like constantly jittering up and down it's because it's going to the values here and then back to the values here which if you remember, we had set like 25 for the speed and 25 for the distance. So we need to control when we want to switch between the states. And this is where this trigger zone comes into play here. So obviously if nothing is going on, then we don't want uh, up to go to down. So why don't we wire up? Oh, uh, uh, when someone actually puts their hand in the zone though, we want the button to be pressed down. So why don't we trigger that first? So if you remember, if we put our, our uh, laser pointer on this, we can see. So we want when entering the zone. Now, you may think that this is probably the right one to use, but the problem is that it outputs a brief value. So if I hold this down here and I put my hand in, it only sends the value out for a brief moment. What we want is a consistent signal that says that this is uh, this needs to happen now. Um, so it's actually better to use totally cur total currently in the zone because then we get nice s consistent uh, um, nice constant signal uh, that we can work with here. So why don't we do that first? Let's hook that up. So we're going to take the uh, green pin and we're going to hook it up to this first state here. Okay, interesting. So everything stopped. And the reason why it stopped is because now this gate has a specific uh, uh, condition that needs to be met. Once that condition is met, it'll open up and it'll send the signal out. So if I now stick my hand in, it'll pass the value, it'll open up the gate, and it'll go from up into down. But because I have my hand in here, it's constantly sending it back to up, and then up is Again, it's open, so if I move my hand out, it'll stop. So now we need to control when the down needs to happen, or the down needs to go back up. We need to control when that happens. Um, so 
with our button here, it's once I pull my hand away, it's when it rebounds and pulls back up. So if you remember, that's the blue pin here on the trigger zone. That's when exiting the zone. So I'm gonna wire the blue pin up to this other gate here. Great. So now, if I take my hand, stick it into this trigger zone, it pushes the piston up. But if I remove my hand, it pops right back down. Interesting, why does it pop back down instead of going down smoothly? Well, let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the two um, states real quick. So we have up, and it's our our values that we have here are one, it's on, but its speed is zero, and its uh, location that we want to move to, our move to target, is zero. If we look at down, it's also on, but we're giving it a speed of 25, and we're also telling it to go to 25 centimeters, and that's the difference here. Is in up we're missing a speed here. So if you have zero speed and you're also giving it a specific uh, distance to go to, it'll just go there instantly. So that's why we get this nice movement up, but once we pull our hand out, it pops. So in up, we need to change this to the same speed as we had set for down. So I'll do 25 here. So now when I stick my hand in, it goes up. If I pull my hand out, it goes back down. Nice. Okay, so obviously this is way too slow for a button. Um, so I'm actually going to put in some values here that I happen to know work really well. And this, you can just, you can figure this out by your own experimentation. Um, but I have found that a speed of 500, which sounds extreme, but it's actually not, um, is actually really good. So we're going to do 500 for this speed. So now when I stick my hand in, oh, pops up, pull hand pops down up and down. Um, now, kind of ironically, we have up and down, but this is actually going up when it's in the down state and down when it's in the up state. Uh, why don't we change that real quick? Why don't we just take this gizmo and rotate it? And now that should make more sense. If we stick our hand in, it goes down. Pull our hand out, it goes back up. Nice. So now we have a gizmo that is moving up and down very much like our button here. But we need to use this to control that. So how do we do this? Okay, so this is where we start wiring gizmos to objects. So I'm just gonna move all this stuff over here a little bit. Um, usually for like a state machine, I like to try and keep it kind of tidy, you know, just no sense having a mess. Why don't we just, um, that. So I'm going to take this uh, gizmo here and I'm just going to pull it out here so it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so all gizmos have three components. They have the input pins, which we've been using, but all this has this body. This is uh, a separate component. And then there's also this uh, little copper pin here. This is what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it a copper pin. So these three components make up a gizmo and you'll see that in a lot of the other gizmos here. Um, each one of these I get kind of really close in here you can see each one has a body it has a copper pin and then you know it's not rendering the pins but there's usually pins on the sides of all these two so those are the three components in this, and they, they do different things so if I was to drive something or move something uh, in Rec Room using a gizmo you always hook it up to the copper pin the copper pin is like the driving mechanism of this gizmo and we can connect things together by using the wire tool. Much like how we connect circuitry together, we can also connect gizmos to objects. So I'm gonna take the wire tool. I'm gonna go to the copper pin here and it has this like gear icon. Uh, if I pull this out and I'm going to select, or I'm gonna like put my laser pointer on the frame of this button here and then let go. But you'll see now there's a line drawn between the copper pin and what is the center of this frame or this button that we've drawn. And now if you stick your hand into this trigger zone, look at that, the button moves. It moves a lot, but it moves. So now we've successfully rigged a object that we've uh, made 
with the uh, shape tool and connect it to a gizmo and then have moved it and we're triggering that movement. So now you can start seeing how this is going to get really powerful over time. You can start building a very complicated uh, contraptions using this very simple uh, layout here. Um, now one interesting thing to note, um, it's moving the whole button. And not only that, it's also moving it a lot. So we need to address that for a sec. Now, why is it moving the entire button? So if you remember earlier on when I had talked about when you make a shape, you actually make a group, it's a shape group. Um, and so any objects you put into it are considered one object when it's actually, when you actually leave the, the editing mode. And that's what's happening here. We've hooked up this to this shape group. So it's moving all these shapes together. Um, so that, that's a bummer. I mean, what do we do about this? So um, we can actually split objects out of uh, one shape group and put them into their own shape group. Um, and that's really easy, actually. We can actually do that by going to uh, the Edit button here. So we'll go to Edit, and we'll uh, click Edit on our shape uh, group of this button. And if we use the Select tool now, we can select the pieces that we want to separate out. So I want to separate out this button from this frame. Um, so I'm going to select the, uh, the pad here. Um, it highlights a little yellow. Um, and then there's a three dot menu, which you probably can't see from the recording, but there's like a little three dot menu that pops up. So we're going to tap on the three dot menu and then there is a menu that pops up that says split shapes. So we're going to hit split shapes. And what happens here is it takes the object that we had selected and it splits it into its own group. So you'll notice now I can't really modify this anymore. I can modify these pieces, but I can't modify this pad anymore because this pad is now considered its own shape group. So we're not even editing it anymore. It's been put into its own group. So let's get out of editing mode, hit done. And now you can see if I move just the frame, uh, the frame is attached to this piston, but the button has been separated. So now it moves on its own. Okay, that's great, but um, obviously we're moving the wrong thing. So why don't we disconnect the frame from the piston here, so that line gets uh, taken away, and then let's reconnect the, uh, the copper pin to just the button pad here. So now if we stick our hand into this uh, trigger zone here, which I'm going to just kind of move this over here just a little bit closer here so we can see what happens here. So when I put my hand in, uh, yeah, okay. So now it's pushing just the button pad down. Now that's a lot of movement. Uh, we don't actually need that much. So in our down state, back over here, let's go and edit that real quick. And then the values here, so We've got a speed going for it. This is the distance. This is how much it's moving. It's moving 25 centimeters. That's way too much. So we should probably change this to something a bit smaller, like five centimeters. Why don't we try that? Sure. So now let's stick our hand in. Ah, interesting. That looks really good. Yeah. Cool. So now we've got pretty much a working button. Like if I take this trigger zone and I set it on top here, roughly, stick my hand in, bink. I'm now pressing down the button and then I can release it and the button pad comes up. Awesome. Um, it's a kind of a little herky-jerky though. Um, so there's, let's go back to the piston for a second. There's one thing that I didn't really touch on here. This is the acceleration time. Acceleration time kind of like smooths the transition from like going from like zero to the speed that you have indicated. Um, so you can kind of allow it to kind of like slowly ramp into that speed over time. Um, and that may, might make the movement of this button maybe move a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to add half a second of smoothing in here. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have a gizmo um, selected, it won't actually uh, move at all. So you have to deselect it. You can do that by just like pointing out somewhere and then pressing holding down the trigger to deselect the object. Okay, so now oh yeah, that feels a lot better. Good. Okay. So, 
um, why don't we clean things up here? Like, we don't need this gizmo like really far out here. So why don't we just quickly disconnect the pad from here? We'll take the gizmo and we'll just kind of like move it a little bit out of the way. And then let's rewire it back up to the pad in here. So it still works. As you can see, it's just kind of made like a link from the copper pin to that pad there. Um, so it really doesn't matter where it, you know this this particular gizmo is placed. As long as it's connected, it will just move it um, up or down. Good. Um, let's see, what else should we talk about? Oh, right. Okay, so what if I want to like move this button? What if I want to use this somewhere and I want to like actually make it, you know, move as one piece? Because like right now, uh, that is not going to work. So if I want to like move this button, like, okay, so here's the trigger zone, I got to move the trigger zone, and then uh, here's the, the frame of the button, and oh my god, everything is just breaking and falling apart. Um, let's undo that real quick. So really what you will need to do here is you need to, um, you need to connect all these guys together so that they all work as one complete thing. Um, and I think the easiest way to is to actually so if we talk, or if you remember, I was talking about how there's like three components to a, uh, a gizmo. There's a body of the gizmo. So you're driving something through the copper pin, but you know these two things now that they're connected are considered one object. So we can actually move everything by just grabbing the body of this piston. So we can actually use that to our advantage here. So if I take this piston body and I connect the piston body to the frame of this button what has essentially happened is I've now connected we have the button pad connected to the piston the piston is now connected to the frame of this button so now I can just take the frame of this button look at that I'm now pulling the whole thing with it now we still have an issue with the uh, the triggers on here so we need to figure out what we're gonna do about that um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it on top of the button here. And then I'm just going to also connect the trigger zone to the copper pin on here. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because you can only link one thing to the body of a gizmo at a time. But you can connect multiple things to the copper pin. So um, I think what's really important here is that we make sure that we have the frame of this button connected to everything and then everything else moves with the piston. So now, if I stick my hand in, yep, it works. Looks good. And if I want to move this button, I can move, I can pull just the frame and it takes the trigger zone with it. You know, I, I can move it around and actually push the button into my finger and make it work. Um, yeah. So that's a really nice little package we got here. So we got this little button that we've made and we uh, have customized it to the way that we want it to be and then this is now like a really nice package we can take this somewhere we can like stick it up on a wall and then players have to like hit it you know things like that um and you can actually do so much more with this button than you can do with this uh, in-game button um i think for the last thing i'm going to talk about let's talk about packaging this up and so that we can actually take it and use it in like another room or in another invention or something like that or sorry in another um like uh, custom environment um, and the way we do that is through what's called inventions so if you look at your uh, palette here um, I've got a bunch of different inventions but essentially an invention is a collection of things that you have built grouped together into one thing uh, that you can plop into another environment you can import them in. so it's kind of like saving an entire like blueprint of something and then, like making a copy of it in a different room um, super useful. Uh, so why don't we uh, do that real quick. So you can actually do that by going to make invention. Get this panel that comes up. It says select the objects you want to be part of your invention. Um, and so we will do that. So we're going to start with the state machine here and I'm going to just press and hold down on my trigger. And I get this like really nice selection uh, sphere that appears. Maybe you can see this, maybe you can't, I don't know. I haven't checked on my recording. Um, but now I'm like, I can drag, I can start selecting all of the pieces that make up my button here. Um, I also seem to have selected my couch back there, so I'm gonna de deselect my couch. Um, anyway, 
So now we've got we've got uh, the frame of the button, we've got the button pad, we've got the trigger zone, we've got the piston, and then we got the circuitry for it as well. So all this is selected. So I count one, two, three, four, five, pad is six, frame is seven. Seven objects. Good. Okay. So we'll hit next and we'll name this my awesome button. Yeah. Okay. And if you want, you can put in a description for it. This is more relevant for like, if you want to save this to like the store, the Recon uh, Invention store, like you can give a nice description to tell like what exactly the thing is that you are, that you just made. But we'll hit, we'll skip that, we'll just hit next. And then it wants you to take a picture of this. So this is like the thumbnail for helping you like quickly identify it along amongst your list of things. So I'm just gonna do that. And I'm gonna hit take picture. Does a little countdown lags you out for a second and then hey it saves it so now I've got the name my awesome button I've got the picture of it we get a nice ink cost it tells me it's a low ink 1.9% um, it's not bad um, and there's also some like filters here and this is really helpful like if you want to like publish it to the rec room invention store you want to put in some very meaningful tags here so that people can search for them and find the right thing that they're looking for um, also the creator. Um, there's a couple other things in here. Maybe we'll get into a little bit of detail later, but um, quickly like in setup, you can update the invention. So like if you make a change here, go back to this invention and then hit update. And then you can change something of the, uh, of the invention um, instead of just deleting it and making a new one. You can also delete it by the way. Uh, and then you can also set permissions on it for other people if they want to download it from the Rec Room uh, Invention Store. Um, you can publish it, you can, you can allow people to publish it themselves, you can allow people to only edit and save it, use it only, um, things like that. Uh, there's deeper uh, topics on that we'll maybe we'll cover a little bit later. Uh, Alright, okay. so um, now that we've saved it as an invention, uh, we can just call it up by going to the create and then make sure our palette's open. And in our invention here, uh, maybe it needs to be updated here. Ah, there we go. So in the invention tab here, we've got the button that we just made. So if we select it and look out to point, there it is. And uh, I, I currently have the trigger held down. So while you have the trigger held down, you can actually get a preview and you can like decide how you want to place this before, you're, uh, before you uh, release and, and commit to importing it. So I'm gonna release right here. So now it's in the world, and it works. I can make a ton of these, just like that. Yeah. And so from here on out, um, you can take these buttons and you can use them to trigger other events, turn on and turn off lights, move objects. You know the you know sky's the limit. So um, hopefully now you have a very useful um, uh, invention that you've made that you can use for all all sorts of other uh, uh, projects that you, you could potentially use it for. So I think that about covers it. So we kind of went over, you know, like I said, this is going to be like a crash course in in uh, in the Maker Pen tool. But you know, we've gone over, you know, how to use like a trigger zone and how to actually build like a button. Um, you know, how to rig it up with a piston and how to use like we even got into the state machines. Like that's advanced stuff. Um, but anyway, um, I hope that was, I hope that was helpful. At least, uh, it, my, my goal is to really just help people have the confidence to be able to just like get into rec room and just, uh, hit the ground running and just start building stuff. So, um, find me on discord and the rec room discord. Uh, I'm a few good tacos there as well. Uh, I'm always happy to offer suggestions or help troubleshoot things like that. If you're just, you happen to be stuck. Um, but I hope this uh, tutorial was useful. Um, uh, with that, I think I'll end it here. Um, so uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.